Within this series of videos, you'll learn about behavioral assessments for obesity risk factors. We'll also discuss how to incorporate these behavioral assessments into our development of treatment plans for individuals in need of support. This video will focus on our third learning objective, which is to identify the strengths and limitations of different measures of dietary intake. We currently have three main ways of assessing dietary patterns, all of which are subjective approaches, wherein we must rely on the patient or participant to self-report or record their dietary intakes. These approaches include a food or diet log, where the respondent keeps a written diary of all foods and beverages consumed over a period of time, a food frequency questionnaire, which is typically used in large epidemiological studies of dietary patterns, and for this assessment, the respondent estimates the frequency to which different foods were consumed over the past month or a period of time, and a 24-hour dietary recall interview, where an interviewer uses a multiple-pass interview process to have the respondent recall all foods and beverages consumed over the past 24 hours. A food diary or weighted food record can be a good way for patients to monitor their own intakes, but also to provide you with detailed information about a representative day or week of eating. For this measure, you would ask the patient to keep a diary of their intake over a predetermined period of time. To increase accuracy, you can ask the patient to weigh each food before and after they eat it, so you obtain good data on the amount consumed. This approach works best if you provide a template that asks for pertinent details, such as serving sizes and brand names. This will allow for more accurate estimation of calories and nutrients. This approach works well with motivated patients who want to learn more about their own dietary patterns and are motivated to put the time into keeping an accurate food log. This approach is very cheap and easy to administer, but it is very burdensome for the patient. It requires them to track everything they eat for a period of time, which can become tedious. However, there are many smartphone and computer apps that can be used for this process and that may make the experience a bit easier and more fun for the patient. In addition, the act of recording can change behavior for the better or may cause the patient to omit foods that they are embarrassed about, both of which may decrease the accuracy of the data you collect. Let's move on to a food frequency questionnaire. This is a large questionnaire that assesses typical dietary patterns by having participants give a retrospective estimation of their typical intakes of a wide variety of foods, food groups, and beverages. Here is an example of a food frequency questionnaire, which comes from the U.S.'s National Health and Nutrition Examination Survey, or NHANES. This is an ongoing survey of Americans' health behaviors and outcomes. As you can see, questions in this questionnaire assess the respondents' intakes of a wide variety of foods and food groups. The first question asks how often over the past 12 months the respondent drank tomato juice or vegetable juice, and the respondent can indicate whether they never drink tomato juice versus whether they drink it anywhere between one time per month or less and six or more times per day. Question two asks for the respondent's frequency of consuming orange juice or grapefruit juice, whereas question three assesses for the frequency of consuming apple juice. These questionnaires are typically very long and assess intakes of a wide array of fruits, vegetables, grains, protein-rich foods, dairy products, beverages, and so on. Food frequency questionnaires are a great way to assess typical dietary patterns, especially when you are surveying large groups of people or conducting population monitoring of dietary patterns. Advantages include low respondent burden, and the ability to assess an individual's habitual consumption over a period of time. These questionnaires are easy to administer and can be administered at a low cost. They can also be self-administered by the patient by mail or the internet. However, the food frequency questionnaire is not a particularly precise measure and may miss some foods or food groups, especially if it is not tailored to the cultural preferences of the population you are studying. It cannot give great detail about specific nutrients because it doesn't give a precise estimate of daily intakes, rather a broader picture of habitual patterns over time. It may also be subject to reporting bias because the patient may misestimate their intake or may not feel comfortable reporting certain food items. Let's move on to the 24-hour recall interview. This is currently considered our gold standard for dietary assessment. It's not perfect, but is currently our most rigorous and thorough method for assessing dietary intake and dietary patterns. 
It is an informal qualitative method where the interviewer asks the patient to recall all of the foods and beverages that they consumed in the last 24 hours. Interview prompts also elicit the quantities and methods of preparation. As a result, this interview provides information about typical intake patterns, the types of foods and snacks eaten, the beverages consumed, and methods of preparation, such as whether foods are fried versus baked, or whether things like condiments are added to them. The interview structure includes a three-step process where the interviewer first asks for a quick list of everything the patient ate in the previous 24 hours. Then the interviewer asks for more detailed descriptions of the time of day each food was consumed, a description of each food, including the brand and preparation method, portion sizes consumed, and amounts consumed, as well as anything that was added to the food, including condiments, oils, sugars, dressings, etc. Finally, the interviewer reviews the entire recall and prompts the patient to report any commonly missed foods such as extra drinks or snacks. Advantages of the 24-hour recall are that it can be easy to do and can be done on the spot if you have someone who is trained in the method. It also helps to provide detailed nutrition information about a typical day of eating. So it can give us good information about nutrient deficiencies, calorie intakes, and levels of macro versus micronutrients the individual is consuming. It can be done in person, over the phone, or over the internet, so there is much flexibility in how this assessment can be administered. However, it is possible that interview findings are not representative of a typical day or long-term dietary habits of the patient. So it might be helpful to ask additional questions of the patient to assess how representative this day was or whether it was unusual based on their typical dietary patterns. Dietary recall findings may also be biased because they rely on the patient's memory and their willingness to report what they ate. Patients may have a hard time estimating portion sizes and food preparation methods, especially if they aren't preparing the foods themselves or eating outside the home. As with assessment of physical activity, your choice of assessment should match your setting, your resources, and your data needs. More labor-intensive approaches, such as food diaries or weighted food records, are probably a better fit when you're working with individuals or in clinical settings, whereas a food frequency questionnaire is more commonly used to assess larger groups. Let's wrap up with some key takeaways. We currently only have subjective ways to assess dietary patterns, and these methods include food diaries, food frequency questionnaires, and 24-hour recall interviews. Each assessment approach has advantages and disadvantages. Ultimately, your choice of assessment should match your setting and your data needs. That's all for this video. Thank you for learning with me.